Welcome back to the channel. Here at Dermatology X, today we'll be talking about a different dermatological condition called lichen planus. We'll be going through the causes, features, diagnosis, and treatment. So in terms of an overview of lichen planus, it is a non-infectious and inflammatory skin condition <clears throat> affecting predominantly middle-aged adults and affects 1-2% to of the population. Here we can see images on the lower left side of the screen demonstrating some classic images of lichen planus on the extensor surfaces of the wrists there. Lichen planus is a generally chronic condition. It can be asymptomatic, but it can also be symptomatic and present with burning and itchy sensation. In terms of the causes of lichen planus, it's thought to be due to an abnormal immune reaction, considered an autoimmune disease. It is associated with hepatitis C. However, most people with lichen planus do not have hepatitis C. There are some other rare associations to know for lichen planus. These include viruses such as HHV6, HHV7, herpes simplex virus, and varicella virus. It's associated with some vaccinations, as well as amalgam teeth fillings and metals such as gold and copper. There are also a long list of medications which is known to be associated with lichen planus. Some of the key ones listed here include diuretics, ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, non steroidal anti-inflammatories, anti-malarials, and gold. So what are the clinical features of lichen planus? It is known as the six P's of LP. The six P's stand for purplish, papule or plaque, polygonal, planar, and pruritic. So these describes six key features of lichen planus. You can see these features here on this image in the center. It's important to examine the extensive surfaces, the mouth, and the genital areas, as these are regions where lichen planus may often present. Lichen planus lesions may have a stringy reticulate white scale on the surface, which is known as Wiccan striae. It is also seen in the inside of the mouth for lichen planus lesions with a reticulate white lacy surface appearance. Lichen planus is also associated with what we call coerbinous phenomenon, whereby trauma, such as scratching on the surface of the skin, can induce lichen planus lesions in the areas which has been traumatized. How do we make a diagnosis of lichen planus? It is typically diagnosis based on clinical appearance. However, in some cases, a skin biopsy may be necessary to confirm the diagnosis and exclude other differentials. This is the classic appearance under the microscope when we examine for the histology of lichen planus lesions. We can see here that there's a classic lymphocytic infiltrate at the interface between the epidermis, which is the top layer of the skin, and the dermis. As I alluded to earlier, there are multiple variants of lichen planus. And I like to think of them of these variants in broad categories. You can think of them as based on their location. So lichen planus in the oral cavity, lichen planus involving the nails, the genitals, scalp, um, sun exposed areas, so actinic lichen planus, as well as flexural inverse areas such as the armpit and groin folds, which is known as inverse linus lichen planus. Another broad category is based on the appearance of the lesions. You can have a hypertrophic form of lichen planus, an atrophic form, an annular form, as shown here in this image, a bullous form, or linear form. And the third broad group uh, for other ones, including lichen planus pigmentosus, which has a darker appearance, lichen planus pemphigoides, lichen planus planopolaris, which involves the scalp, and some lesser known ones, including Graham Little Picardi Lasseur syndrome. What are the treatment options for lichen planus? Well, ideally, one would like to prevent further exacerbation of the lesions. So reducing any trauma, which otherwise could cause new lesions due to the coabnerization phenomenon. It's also important to manage risk factors and associations, such as hepatitis C, 
and to avoid and stop medications which may be potentiating lichen planus. In terms of a treatment ladder, monitoring is certainly an option. Topical treatments such as topical corticosteroids and topical calcineurin inhibitors are often first-line options. Intralesional steroid injections may be suitable for very localized lichen planus lesions. Light therapy in the form of phototherapy is often used. And then there are oral options, including a short course of oral prednisone, which is a systemic steroid, as well as other systemic treatments, including hydroxychloroquine, acetretin, methotrexate, cyclosporin, mycophenolate mofetil, and others. In terms of the prognosis, chronic lichen planus lesions can lead to atrophy and scarring, particularly if left untreated. Skin lichen planus lesions usually does not carry a risk of transforming into skin cancer. However, the ulcerative form of lichen planus in the mouth does have a risk of transformation into oral malignancies. Genital lichen planus, such as vulval lichen planus, also has a risk of transformation into cancers, including squamous cell cancer, and therefore, these subpopulations should be closely monitored to observe for any potential risk of transformation. Thank you for joining us on this episode today. We hope to see you next time.